My name is Yao Edu and I'm co-founder and CEO for the Center for Social Innovations. I want to start my session by just giving you a bit of a background on uh, CSI. Um, we are based in Kumasi, founded in 2015. Um, at that time, I had just um, completed three years of work in the northern part of Ghana. Uh, mainly with um, grassroots organizations, and I needed something different. I, knew, I needed a new challenge. So I teamed up with two of my friends, who one from business, the other who is more like me, who is also from development, and combines the business angle as well. So we, f we founded the Center for Social Innovations, and um, we are, we're headquartered in Ghana. Um, now we are we have programs in about seven out of the ten regions of Ghana. We want to expand. We've engaged about three thousand uh, students, educators, and young uh, professionals and community leaders as well. Uh, we have a partnership and support from Google that is able to um, get a support to train our teachers um, to adopt social innovation in the teaching of computer science. Our programs include social innovation education, sustainable community development, social enterprise acceleration, and research. Our motivation, by the way, is um, you know, sort of around how we can enhance educational outcomes and also address the, the skewed nature of our development in our communities, where we want to address the issue of when you go into communities, people are asking you, what did you bring for me? But we want to flip the coin around and say, what do you have? So if you're wondering what social innovation is, um, for us, it's about new, new strategies, uh, new concepts and ideas, and new organizations like Center for Social Innovation. So we've been in operation for about three years. So we still consider ourselves as new. Um, we, are, we, we are trying to meet the uh, the, the needs of different elements, working conditions, um, education in communities, and also health. We want to expand the, uh, the frontiers and strengthen our relationship with uh, different actors, and also do some activism um, along the line with the information that we have. We do some activism to enhance educational outcome, and also uh, to be able to change the, the, dy the dy dynamics of development, especially in our uh, rural areas. So for us, um, it's a new type of thinking, uh, really, uh, for us to do things differently. Um, we are looking at how we can be very, very flexible and um, how different people from different um, backgrounds can work together. Uh, when we have students and entrepreneurs in our midst that we work with, uh, we are, they are as diverse as people from business to people from uh, anthropology. There's also the concept of the connected difference. And I'll quote Brian Goodwin, uh, who says that what you want to do is to get from people having a, a fear of change to a fear of what will happen if they don't change. Um, in most cases, you have a situation where uh, people don't want to change. This is, this is how I do my thing. Uh, I don't want to change from it, especially in our communities. They say, this is how we do things here. You know, and um, because sometimes they fear change. Uh, and, and other times too, they, they don't know what will happen, really. Sometimes change can be, uh, you know, can be a, a bit distressing. You don't know what will happen, so you don't want to change. You want to keep doing uh, the things that we are doing. So let's get to really as to how we do, we, we harness design thinking in social innovation or uh, in sustainable development. We do that by harnessing two approaches. Um, one is uh, design thinking, as I've said, and then asset-based community development. And here we are looking at and reinforcing the fact that in every community, there are assets. These assets are bound in the knowledge of the, the knowledge systems, the knowledge of the people. Um, we're looking at uh, different assets, assets that are physical, sometimes emotional, spiritual, all of these assets we want to harness. Um, and for us, we believe that communities, when they are supported and empowered, they can address their own uh, challenges 
and not have to, um, not in a situation where people will just go there and want to address their challenges for them. Um, I'm not going to belabor this point because we know uh, what design th uh, thinking is, but we are really looking at who, who are, are we working with in the communities? Students, entrepreneurs coming in, working with uh, people in the community, whether they are community leaders, um, whether they are women, children, uh, students in the community as well, and the elderly. We're looking at also the what. What are their, their, their needs? What is it that we can work around to be able to address some of the, their priorities? And how? How are we going to do it? Uh, we're looking at also the why. You know, why we need to do it. So, one of the things that we do is to have our students and entrepreneurs develop asset maps. Um, and then they do that by working with, the, uh, with community, community members. So they develop asset maps that sort of highlight, is my time up? <laughs> that sort of highlights uh, the assets within the community. Um, and here we're looking at um, and identifying priorities. We're looking at generating new knowledge. Uh, sometimes it's not even new, it's already there. So what you're doing is just uncovering um, the, the knowledge that is already there. And we are identifying these assets, we are conducting research, uh, sometimes not just an expansive research, but also finding out, you know, asking the whys and finding out. And also leveraging the, these assets to be able to inform an action. So, you know, quick, uh, quickly go to um, how the design thinking for social innovation, how we do it, we have the four eyes. And for us, the four eyes uh, mean uh, immersion, inspiration, innovation, and implementation. And I'll explain quickly. So for immersion, when we have students and young professionals uh, go into communities that we identify, we try to get them to understand, uh, to sort of uh, work with community leaders, uh, community people, different com whether they are women groups, or different actors within the community and understand uh, some of the issues that are of priority to them, highlight the issues. And whilst you're doing that, identify the assets. So all of these issues that we are highlighting are mapped to an asset to be able to um, address the issue um, in, in the long run. So we're also looking at inspiration. Once you've gathered all this uh, information and, and you've done an asset map, we are saying that you, we, are, we need to analyze the issues, and there are different tools that we use in analyzing that. We analyze the issues to understand the local assets and resources that could be leveraged to address the issue that already you have uh, been able to highlight. And then, then this is mainly done through innovation teams that includes uh, community members and also uh, the students or young professionals. They work together in, in teams to be able to address the issues that we highlight. And then once we've We've gone through the process of immersion. We've gone through the, uh, the process of um, uh, immersion, inspiration. We move to innovation. So you have all of this information working together in the, in the team. And as you go through the process of you know, uh, innovation to prototype. And the prototyping could be as uh, it's very simple with cardboards like these students are doing. Or you work with the community members to come up with, and I'll talk about some of the, the prototypes. You come up with here, this is a, a nutrition program that uh, was developed in the Ashanti region, and this is being scaled up, it's going to be scaled up in Liberia with uh, an organization called More Than Me. Um, but we'll get there, I'll talk more about, about that one. And so once we, we, are, we, are, we are done with that, you have a prototype, we say you do implementation. Implementation is to develop an action plan uh, to be able to develop business models uh, that will be able to support the action plan that you develop. The main thing here is we are not creating uh, projects and living, we are creating social enterprises. So it's not that we come there, solve a problem and you leave and then sometimes the problem still persists. But you create a social enterprise that will reward the team members and the community members themselves. So that it motivates them to be able to still continue to, to be involved. And this uh, let me go back. This this loop this goes back because when you get here, and sometimes you know I had the teams uh, talking. Sometimes you get there and then uh, you, you you introduce to the larger community. Even though you have community members 
with the innovation team. That's the, the catchphrase. You have a community members in the innovation team. So they help you to identify the assets. They help you to be able to uh, identify some of the issues that are of priority. But then you open up to meet the community members themselves, to uh, interact with different actors, not just the members who are part of the teams. So it opens up for you to know, uh, new, have new knowledge, new information, that sometimes you have, it means you have to probably go back to the immersion stage. So this is not just a, a, a top-down uh, thing, but it also goes up. Because when you get here, sometimes you, you meet the whole community, and you find out, you find out that um, some of the, the, the prototypes, the prototypes that you have, you have feedback, that uh, will need you to go back to the immersion stage. You have to go back. So just to talk about some of the, the, the projects that we've been able to develop uh, from, and also social enterprises uh, from uh, the concept. So in a place called Contumere, uh, Contumere is a green leafy uh, vegetable. But here is the name of a town. But in a local school in Ghana, we are implementing the school feeding program. And the school feeding program is helping students, especially in uh, rural areas, to stay in school and not have to think about food, especially in the afternoons. So there's one hot meal a day, supported by the government. But in, in some places, especially in very far off rural areas, um, they don't get to implement such a project because the government is not supporting them. And so we have a design uh, team in the community, and they developed a, um, a nutrition project. A nutrition project supported by the community themselves. They have a community farm that they um, they have all this, uh, they produce from, for the food, uh, the food that they have to prepare. So it reduces the cost. Uh, community members fetch the firewood, and then they, they set up a business around that nutrition uh, program. In Northern Ghana, um, where a vegetable cooperative, in a place called Gumbihini. So in Gumbihini, Gumbihini is in the center of Tamale. Uh, just between those who are, you know, very much, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Tamale is between Chogu and Sasakawa, uh, Sakasaka, sorry. And uh, over there, in the middle of Tamale, is uh, Gumbihini, where Gumbihini means small kipok trees. So those who know kipok trees, but when you go there, the kipok trees, almost all of them is gone. So it's created um, a, a situation where there's erosion, there's a lot of plastic waste, and affecting vegetable farmers. So the team set out to enhance the vegetable production by helping them to manage their water very well and also address the issue of sanitation because uh, issues of plastics and all of that was affecting their soil which was not uh, helping them to be able to make much yields. So they've built um, a, a project and a business around that that has been now being supported by Equip Hubs and Farmerline uh, which are um, um, a partners that are helping them to be able to implement the project in the area of uh, helping them to be able to get uh, high purchase for uh, for their uh, for fertilizer or for any other you know, for chemicals that they need and also for managing their water. Um, yesterday I was at um, a conference in at, at Tang Palace and basically it's a water and climate change conference and I spoke about this and uh, the Water Resources Commission there was a director from the Water Resources Commission who uh, sort of came up and said, hey, yeah, I think we can work together on this and help them to even manage their water even uh, uh, better uh, because they have, uh, they have a, an innovation that they want to test, uh, rain water harvesting and, and also uh, in, like a, a system that harnesses uh, dam water to be able to help them to um, manage their farms very well. And then in the Upper West, where Bamahu is uh, a place in the in near Wa where the University for Development Studies is. And so we sort of, we went there, we, uh, we engaged uh, students from the UDS and then went to Bamahu. We needed a, the, a, a town that is near to find out whether uh, UDS is having any influence on the uh, towns that are near. Mostly in the universities in Ghana, they don't. So we went there, uh, spoke with the, uh, with the community members. We found out that there are a lot of artisans in the town. But the artisans are not linked to the supply chain of the university. So students and young professionals here meeting with the artisans have developed a database, a database that would, three minutes? Okay. A database that would help them to be able to uh, connect, know who, what skill sets are in the, in the community, form a, um, an association business, and then use that to build their capacity, get tools, and use that to uh, engage the university 
to enter into their supply chain so that when, if they need masons, they need carpenters, um, they need electricians, they will talk to them first instead of going to maybe WOW or going to any other place to be able to uh, come up with. And in the Upper East, where women produce a lot of rice, but then the issue of uh, pricing, quality control becomes an issue. So you have the team in the Upper East that have formed an association business, uh, let's say a cooperative business, to help the women, empower the women to sort the rice very well, know the, um, uh, uh, the, the taste of people in, say, Kumasi or Accra or anywhere, and, and their priority for such rice and be able to um, uh, order the rice directly from the women. So we want to, we want to expand. We want to be able to improve um, the, the program. And so we're looking at areas where we want to have partnerships. And we're looking at data analy analytics for projects and programs. We're looking at plugging into local partnership in, su in support of efforts. So for instance, in Tamale, where the, the, the business has um, partnered with Equip Hubs to be able to give them, help them with technical support and also market pricing. And then there's also, we want to also come up with a social innovation ratio where we sort of highlight social innovative projects from down south uh, to the north. We're looking at also um, design thinking for social innovation fund to help such projects with startups, uh, startup funding that will uh, help them to be able to take off. And then also research into new and emerging concepts. Um, we're looking at Good. So that's my last thing. So new and emerging concepts that would help um, sort of now we're looking at sustainable development. How do you, and uh, the new and emerging concepts there, how do you use local knowledge, you know, traditional knowledge and local knowledge to be able to address some of the uh, issues that are there and how, uh, how do you then use that for, uh, for policy? That's the, uh, the areas of partnership that we want to have. I'm, I'm open for questions. Thank you.